Hey, what's up? This is Joshua. Nice cold day here in Minneapolis uh, in front of a train bridge. So hopefully a train doesn't come by and screw up our stuff. It's a little bright. I'm going to try to find that kind of nice balance between being lit and being blinded. Um, so we're in the midst of this design hack series. It occurs to me, since it rhymes practically with MVA, and it should be called MVA design hacks instead of DVA. So boom, done. Uh, making decisions very easily. Okay, so the first set of videos is all about the idea of like a um, an MVP or a minimum viable project uh, product and how that helps my process along and how it makes it kind of easier for me to work. Whoa, it's so bright. And um, so today what we want to get into is um, uh, maybe like a, a caveat or a preparatory thing. So a, a lot of what I'm proposing is going into clients um, showing work with things that aren't completely not even aren't completely done but aren't sort of done at all so um, coming in with a mood board and using that to set upon a concept um, showing really rough pencil sketches with just uh, visual reference materials even though I've sort of sorted out what I think that will do um, it requires that I go into the meeting or into the, the presentation with a lot of faith in my ability to take something from a very gestational kind of idea-based position and bring it to reality. Um, and if you're a student listening to this, I could be proposing something sort of very risky, like not risky in that you will die, but risky in that you may have to put in, you may have to take a whatever, 12 hour project and turn it into a 20 hour project or even a 30 hour project in order to say, master some type of form making that's in your um, mood boards or a experimental typography approach that you have never done. So, I, for one, don't want to do that. So part of what I'm doing when I walk into the meeting is I'm always proposing something that I have complete confidence in my ability to execute. And occasionally, uh, it gets hairy, and I go, oh, oh man, I'm not sure if this is going to work. Um, definitely more than once. It's going to happen every once in a while. Um, and. And, and that sort of speaks to having some kind of rough idea of what you're going to do to make sure it is going to work. Um, but part of my faith comes from just a lot of years of practice. So if I'm being sort of accurate, I've been making graphic design since I was 12 years old. So we're talking 20 some odd years of experience from working with typewriters and glue sticks and photocopiers to um, later learning Quark and, uh, and Adobe Streamline and then into like when the sort of when InDesign came out and made my life wonderful and awesome. Um, that's just a lot of technical experience and then there's all of the stuff that I've gotten to see and absorb over those years and the stuff I've gotten to try. And I think one of the, the big sort of differentiators on, or not differentiators, one of the key reasons that I can go from these very rough beginnings of something, get consensus on it, and move forward with confidence, is I have tried a lot of shit, and I've tried and failed at a lot of things. Um, my student work is all over the place and crazy, and the one thing that can sort of define it is that every project started from zero. Uh, nothing was ever taken for granted. Nothing ever went where I thought it would go. I tried and failed on so many projects that I can't even really say were truly finished so much as I just had to be, I had to quit. You know, it was like, end of the semester, this thing isn't finished, but it is done, if that makes sense. So um, I, I just tried a lot of stuff and in my professional work, it was really rare that I would go into a project with a preconceived notion and walk out the other side of it, hang, having executed on the preconceived notion. Uh, very often the research led me down different avenues. And then there's the fact that I've had really crazy jobs. Like I've had stuff where I've designed in a sort of like Swiss fashion for signage and target, 
to doing packaging for candy for Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium and crazy light up signs for Transformers. Like I've had to work in so many different um, aesthetic arenas, I guess, and tried so many different illustration techniques from the different jobs that I've had where like maybe I didn't have a choice in, in, in terms of what I was going to be doing visually for a project. Um, so to, to work the way that I'm describing, you have to sort of really understand where you're at and what you're doing and you have to, I think, have put in the work to fail that a lot of people haven't done and a lot of people are really afraid of. Um, if you're a student, I would really argue that it, it is your responsibility to become really proficient at generating ideas and to try lots of shit more than anything else, more than finishing projects, trying lots of shit, because that's a long-term game that you're playing. Uh, finishing projects with a high degree of polish, it's certainly important, but that's like a short game. That's like trying to get the job right out of school. Uh, I'm concerned with a really long game. Um, I'm concerned with how happy I am with the work I do now um, that is built upon all the mistakes and all the sort of crazy shit that I did leading up to it. I'm trying to make sure I'm not putting my thumb in the way here. Um, so a couple of last thoughts. Things I like really recommend doing, like one, start every project from zero. Like don't don't get don't find out about a project and immediately jump into oh this is gonna be my Swiss looking project or this is gonna be my thing that bites uh Paula Cher or whatever. Like start every project from zero and find the right answer for it that's like expresses your true perspective on it. Um, two, uh, a thing that I am lucky enough to do with a lot of my classes is we do typography projects where we straight up copy masterpieces. We try to understand uh, the visual code of how it works and then we just copy it. And I still do that in classes. I've been teaching for, God, I guess not quite 10 years, eight years maybe. and. Um, and one of the things that I do routinely is I sit down at the same time that my students are copying some classical piece of Renaissance typography and I copy one too and I learn new stuff and I gain greater sensibility and sensitivity to typography and then later I'm going to copy a uh, Victorian wood type announcement of some crazy auction and then in that same semester I'm going to copy a, uh, a Kurt Schwitter's piece and then later an Emil Reuter piece and each of those is going to teach me something and is going to stretch my ability to work um, to work in different visual languages and then I'm going to do little formal exercises uh, maybe just like really silly little stuff that's going to help me learn so it's like right now every time I'm in a restaurant and there's a glass of water on the table I'm trying to make images with that glass of water uh, every time my kids paint I take all the excess paint and try to make new images from that. Um, for a while, I used to do these two little typographic experiments um, each day. I would take a flyer from a local uh, venue, like a, you know, whatever, a Today's the Day show, and I would set a timer for 10 or 12 minutes and design, um, I would take one typeface, black and white, and just design a flyer for that with an egg timer turned on. And then I would do it again, making sure I used a different typeface or trying to learn something new about that typeface. Uh, those things stretch me and the, the foundations never stop being useful, right? Like if you're a basketball player, you don't ever stop learning, you don't ever stop drilling on free throws because like that's where the game is, right? Um, you don't ever, you don't stop training and just wait around for the game to come. And so a, a designer that's going to continue to grow and continue to get better is going to be training constantly and that's going to pay off in the ability to work on something and have it feel effortless. Um, and to me, that's a real goal. I hate listening to people talk about how they fucking struggle with everything. Fuck struggle. I don't want to struggle. I want shit to be effortless. I want it to be gratifying and enjoyable and challenging but I want it to feel like natural. And that only comes from trying lots of stuff. Um, so thanks a lot for uh, continuing to follow these videos. Please subscribe if you haven't already and leave a comment or send me a message if you have a question. And I feel like I should end on a high note. I don't know, go outside for a little bit, record a video.